Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service on the second Sunday of Epiphany from St Mary's Church in Redbourne. In this Epiphany season, we're reflecting on the different ways in which Jesus is recognised and how God's work in him is revealed. Today, we're going to be considering the call of Samuel in the Old Testament and the call of Philip and Nathaniel in our Gospel reading. But before that, I want to begin our service by sharing a short film. One of the ways that many of us sense God's presence is in the natural world. As we enjoy nature and look at the world all around us, we can sense God's presence and see God's work in creation. So enjoy this film. We all need something to make us smile at the moment. So I hope you'll enjoy this short performance from nature this morning.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is read for us by Clive. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Gospel reading this morning is read for us by Mayo. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. Epiphany. I looked it up in the dictionary and it says an illuminating discovery, realisation or disclosure. I then looked at the Cambridge Dictionary and it said a moment when you suddenly feel that you understand or suddenly become conscious of something that is very important to you and also a powerful religious experience. As we've seen over the last weeks, there are many strands to Epiphany and it seems sometimes they're a bit difficult to fit together. When we look at the Magi, the Baptism of Christ, the Gospel today, and then next week, we come to the first miracle. It seems that the definition that I've just come across seems to help us. The reading today are all about realisation, the disclosure, and it happens in our lives quite often, when and when, where we least expect. Take the reading from Samuel. If we look further back in the Bible, Samuel was named by his mother in answer to a prayer for her to have a child. His name means the Lord heard. Samuel already lived with Eli and was living the life of a priest, sleeping in the ark of God. But suddenly, as if for the first time, God calls this young priest to be a prophet, one who speaks out God's words truthfully and courageously. The passage shows one of God's defining characteristics, an embracing knowledge of us all, stretching back before we were born and embracing everything we are, good and bad, at the right time, he reveals to us what he wants from us. Or maybe in times of difficulty, he lets us know he's there. For Samuel, it was, Samuel, it was unexpected. It took three times before he realised it was God talking to him. A total revelation. I'm reminded of Christmas and parcels. As a child, and probably even now, we shake, we squash and we squeeze that parcel under the tree. 
wondering what it will reveal. I also think of pass the parcel. At first, it used to be a nice, neat shape for a small child. But now, as children get older, and I don't know what you think, but that happens earlier and earlier, you need to hide the final present's identity. Consequently, you start with this big, squashy bundle that bears no resemblance to the final prize. And that's how I think revelation comes. There's no obvious place or even time scale. We've no idea of how many layers there are, and we don't know when it will happen, when the cry goes up and all is revealed. As past the parcel shows, we try hard not to reveal the contents. And in life, maybe we do that too. Do we always reveal our faith? And at times in our lives, we don't even want God to reveal anything to us. In difficult times, or even good times, it might not be what we want, or even like Samuel, we don't recognise what's happening. And he needed Eli to make him aware that it was God calling him. So what do we need? We've just listened to the Gospel with Philip and Nathaniel, recognising Jesus as the Son of God. This big reveal is that Jesus is stating it himself. John introduces his listeners to Jesus' mission a day at a time. On the previous day, Andrew and another disciple found Jesus. Now Jesus takes the initiative and finds Philip. There's a, find of, a pattern of finding as the group of disciples grow and take shape. The disciples also start expressing their new relationship by saying, we found the Messiah. Finding implies a recognition of their ability to connect deeply with Jesus. All is being revealed. However, when Philip finds Nathaniel, there's a slight change in what is happening. Nathaniel doesn't accept the invitation, but challenges Philip to prove that anything good, let alone the Messiah, can come from somewhere like Nazareth. It appears that this small town is not the best place to abide. Philip recalls Jesus' invitation to the two disciples the previous day. Come and see. The Greek word see implies far more than take a look. To see is to understand. For Nathaniel, though, it's his conversation with Jesus. He realises that Jesus knows far more about him than he expected. Jesus acknowledges him as truly an Israelite. That change is remarkable as Nathaniel heaps Jesus with titles, God's son. Nathaniel reacts with such enthusiasm and Jesus promises far more. The barrier between God and humanity is swept away. Jesus tells Nathaniel how he understands himself. He is the son of man. Does this mean that he's God's chosen one, as in Daniel 7.13? Or is he using it in the Aramaic sense of an ordinary person? I think it's really difficult to tell. John might have both meanings in his mind. But the important thing is that Jesus names himself for the first time. Nowadays, in this high-tech world, if we want to believe something, we'd probably go to the internet for proof. What proof Nathaniel had, other than the opportunity to meet and converse with Jesus? What is he saying 
is just come and see. That's all we all have to do. Fellowship is the heart of Christian life and that is what is being revealed. Life can be very noisy, just all around us, but also in our own heads. Learning to switch off, to close off distractions is very hard, especially at the moment when we're all concerned, worried, even scared. This passage tells of Jesus deliberately creating opportunities to listen to him without distractions so faith can flourish and God speaking to us can be revealed. We find it in other settings as well, such as Paul on the road to Damascus. But you know, he didn't want it, but it was revealed to him. This revelation of God's love and power for us and that he sent his son can be seen in so many places. For me, when we had the opportunity to go to a concert, that seems a lifetime away at present. I went with my daughter and goddaughter to a Spice Girls concert at Wembley. I know, but when you've got children of that certain age. Actually, I wrote on my phone in the middle of that concert as the sun was setting. And I wrote, watching the Spice Girls and yet behind them, a beautiful sunset over the Ark of Wembley Stadium, the revelation of God's creation with the sound behind us. It combined fellowship of being with those you love, but also the peace of the revelation that God created all this and can speak to us wherever we are. And his power and strength cuts through all that surrounds us. C.S. Lewis says, look for Christ and you will find him and with him everything else. But also as with Paul, Samuel and Nathaniel, the unexpected happens and God reveals himself and asks us to listen and to believe, to follow him at all times and in all places, revealing Jesus as his son and what that did for us. But it might be helpful, as Bonhoeffer says, we must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. As we know, he knows us inside out and reveals himself to us when he chooses. Amen. Together let us affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our virtual choir sing the anthem, Come my way, my truth, my life, a setting of George Herbert's poem to the music of Malcolm Archer. prayers of intercession this morning are led for us by David. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ Jesus, let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Lord God, help us to be sensitive to your call. We pray for those who have responded to your voice and have become ministers in your church. We especially pray for all faith leaders during these challenging times. Give them strength and fortitude as they minister to congregations in church, online and through social media platforms. We pray for our archbishops, bishops, priests and deacons in their various roles and responsibilities. We pray for Will and for all who work together with him to ensure that your love, the living good news of Jesus Christ and the comfort of the Holy Spirit forever dwells and grows within our community. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Living God, Jesus was born into the world 
into our story and lived and worked among us. We give thanks that you are one who understands and identifies with our humanity and whoever resonates to our joys and sorrows. We pray for all people living through the difficult days of the COVID pandemic. We remember the leaders of the nations who have to make tough decisions to try to protect the health and safety of their people. We pray for all on the front line of the medical profession, the essential services, and those who supply the food and goods that we have. We pray that each and every person will love their neighbour through their adherence to the temporary restrictions imposed for our common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our caring God, your voice is heard especially in times of hardship and distress. May all who are ill, anxious or bitter be attuned to the words of comfort that you have for your people. We pray for all whose lives are devastated and diminished by COVID. We pray for those who care for them and worry about them. We give thanks for the hope that the COVID vaccine gives us. And we pray for all who are receiving it and all who are assisting with its rollout. We especially pray for our local health practices and hospitals and for all who are being treated for COVID-related conditions and those undergoing other treatments. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our God of eternity, you transcend time and our understanding. We pray that we would always be ready to respond to your call that draws us into your eternal presence. We pray for all who have died this week and for those who mourn their loss. In a moment of silence, we particularly remember those who have died as a result of coronavirus, from disasters on land, sea or air, and those who are victims of political repression or lawlessness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue to pray using the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Receive this sign of peace. We sing now the dentist's favourite hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.